Hello and greetings again from Reading. Today I'm going to be showing you how to change the transformer on a Fender Super Reverb. I thought this would be interesting because this applies to a lot of these old Fenders and the transformer change is very similar. So it doesn't matter if you don't have a Fender Super Reverb, what I'm going to show you should be of interest to you. It's fairly easy just to change the transformer over but I thought you'd be interested to see where the, all the different windings go and how they connect up. So we're going to be putting in, oh if I can pick it up, this little beastie here, which I got from Tube Amp Doctor for some, for some hideous amount of money, like 150 euros. And uh, this is the correct mains transformer for the Fender Super Reverb, which currently is at 120 volts. It's got an American transformer in. So without further ado, let's take a look topside. I'll show you the old transformer and then we'll flip it over and I'll show you how we're going to put in the new one. Here we are topside and here is the old 120 volt transformer which we're going to swap out and on the end here I've just put I've just placed it the new transformer with its what looks like a bewilderingly complex array of wires trust me it's fairly straightforward and by the end of this video you're going to understand exactly what each of these wires does and where it goes I've got the uh, metal lid off here at the moment because I've also recapped this um, amplifier with new smoothing capacitors so I'm not going to show you the removal of this, it's, I'm just going to clip all the leads off to be honest with you, take it out, turn it upside down, and then I'll show you where everything goes from the other side of the amp. So I'll be back in a jiff. Right, that didn't take too long. I've um, taken the transformer out just by the simple expedient of chopping off the, the wires, and um, I've labelled it up because this is going to go onto my store shelf now just in case I need actually in the unlikely event that I need a 120 volt transformer I might um, put that on eBay and see if I can sell it because I don't think I'm ever going to need a, an American um, mains transformer for one of these it leaves oh, a nice clean hole as you can see and uh, the other transformer just drops right in there so I think I will um, flip the chassis over now and show you where the wires go Here's a quick look at what we might expect on the transformer in, in the way of windings. We want our HT winding, and that on this transformer is 365 volts, zero centre tap, 365 volts. We need the heaters for our valves, um, the preamp valves and the power valves, and that's 6.3 volts with a centre tap to reduce hum, 6.3. We need the heaters for our... Um, uh, rectifier valve which uses a different voltage to the other valves for historical reasons that I won't go into um, and that's 5 volts and there are two wires there 5 volts AC these are all AC of course because they're secondaries on the transformer and then finally we have a single wire which is about minus 50 volts which is going to or oh, 50 volts AC which we're going to rectify into into, into about minus 50 volts DC for our bias voltage. So that's what we're going to be looking for in a moment on the secondary side. And on the primary side, of course, we're just looking for, since this is a UK um, amplifier, 240 volts and 0 volts on the primary. Okay, so let's have a look now at the actual amplifier. There's the hole left by the 120 volt transformer. And what we're going to be doing is um, finding, let's start with the heaters. We're going to be putting um, a heater voltage of 5 volts where these two little yellow stubs are. This is the um, rectifier valve here. And we're going to be putting the um, 6.3 volt heaters onto the bulb, which also runs off and does all the heaters for the other valves as well. So that's the 6.3 volts. I'll, I'll come onto these two resistors when we come to connect that up and tell you what's happening here. The bias voltage, the single wire if you remember, is going to go in here. I've chopped off a blue wire there. And this bit of the circuitry here is just a simple diode and a capacitor to rectify and smooth this minus 50 volts to produce 
50 volt to, to produce a minus 50 volts um, bias voltage. Uh, I think that's it. We've got our bias, we've got our heaters for the rectifier tube, we've got our heaters for our preamp tubes and power tubes. Uh, oh, yes, I know what, what, what I've missed it's the HT. The 3650-3650 will go to ground and the two 365 volts will go to the rectifier valve here which really is just a couple of diodes. Think of this as a couple of diodes from here to here and here to here. I'm going to pop the transformer in here and put the bolts in so that it's nice and secure and then we can get ourselves into that rat's nest of wires and see how we go about connecting this up. Well, my plan is to do this as live as possible because it can be a little bit irritating I think if you're if you really want to know how to connect up something like this and then uh, the video keeps jumping where it's all been connected for you so I, I don't know maybe this might be too long a video but I'll give it a go anyway what we're going to do is try to make sense of this chaos of wires coming out of the uh, transformer of course we have um, a diagram or not a diagram we have a kind of crib sheet about what all the colors are it comes with the transformer and what I like to do is to make a start um, on the primary side, forget the secondary for the moment, so here are our primary windings, here are our secondary windings, and get the primary connected up, and in particular start getting rid of leads we don't want, because we're not going to want all of these leads, these are for 230 volt taps, 220 volt taps, and over here we've got some HT taps that we don't need, so I like to get rid of the wires we don't want, and um, I've got a kind of crib sheet here which I've just jotted down, on the primary side we're after black, and red striped black for, for our 240. The black and yellow is 220, the green and black is 230. So there's the green and black look, green striped black, and um, what's the other one we want? Black and yellow, there's the, there's the black and yellow. So what I like to do, I don't like, you know, you don't want to be chopping them off here in case somebody actually ever wants to use these. You always want to be thinking about the next person. So I'm just going to chop them off somewhere here. And we, we want to make sure that they don't get, um, you know, accidentally touched a chassis or something. So we want to make sure these are very secure. And what I'm going to do is take a little bit of heat shrink sleeving and uh, just pop that over the end about halfway along. Another bit of heat shrink sleeving. Pop that over the end of this one. As I say, the wire comes to about halfway along there. Take my trusty heat gun, put it on two, and we're just going to shrink those down. <laughs> and that just insulates those wire ends there from ever accidentally touching the chassis or anything. And now what I would normally do is just kind of double them over each other like that, put a cable tie around them, and uh, pull it up and now they're nice and out of the way but they're available if anybody in the future should want to convert this to say a European European voltage okay so that just leaves us now um, get this primary set up and on the primary side we've got uh, the black which is our zero volts and the red striped black which is our 240 volts and we're also left with an orange which goes to the screen the big copper screen that goes around the outside of the um, of the transformer so at some point we're going to ground this but at the moment we're just interested in our primary side <coughs> now there's a particular way you should always wire the primary of one of these transformers um, here is our mains lead coming in and you can see that the neutral has been chopped off here from our previous transformer. So the neutral is just going to go straight into here. Like that. And the live, let's call it, the 240 volts, is going to go... Well, at the moment, the 240 volts look com comes in here from the mains cable. And it goes correctly to the on-off switch, one side of the on-off switch make sure it's not plugged in, <laughs> no it's not plugged in, good um, comes out of the on off switch, goes through the fuse, this is the correct way of doing it and then from our fuse output we're going to go to our 240 volts input like that 
The reason for doing it that way is because if you went through the fuse first, then went to the on-off switch, um, you know, the fuse could still be live even though someone thinks they've turned it off because the power is actually going to this, this fuse point here. It's only a small point, but it's just a nice safety point. So let's do that now. And again, the way to do that is to um, get some heat shrink sleeving. And it's this black one we want. And I want it about that length. There's no point having excess wire hanging around. Um, so we can chop that off quite nicely there. Put a bit of heat shrink sleeving on. And this is going to cover our join, of course, when we, when we make it off onto here. This has already got a bit of heat shrink sleeving on, so I'm going to see if I can get that off. Um, might need to use a scalpel. A little bit of dissection work there. There we go. And um, I'm just going to clean up that end there with a bit of solder. got the remains of the previous wire on so we'll get rid of that. There we go. So I'm going to tin the end of that one. Now I'm going to strip the end of this one. I always use a pair of automatic wire strippers. These are great little things really. See how that makes really light work of that. And now we'll tin this one. There we go. Now these are ready to solder together. Um, I might need to get my head in there just to um, get a decent solder joint, so excuse my head for a second. <coughs> a bit like surgery this sometimes. There we go. That's made a nice joint on there. I know wiring purists don't like lap joints like that, but that's perfectly okay. Now I'm just going to slide this um, heat shrink sleeving over the top of it like that. Don't do this too quickly when the joint's hot, otherwise you'll find the, the heat shrink sleeving shrinks and you can't get it over the joint. It's very, very annoying. A little bit of heat gun. And that's that one done. Now the other primary is this red striped black which I'm going to eventually you know, dress nicely here with a couple of cable ties. So let's bring that nicely around here. And that needs to go to here, our um, fuse here. And it's actually about the right length. Maybe I'll chop a little bit off there, maybe about, maybe about that much. So we'll chop that off there. Let's strip it. We'll tin it. This may be more detail and more time than you want, but um, I know from watching these videos myself that sometimes I just, you know, it gets a bit annoying when someone just cuts forward and they've done everything. And you think, well, I'd have actually liked to have seen how you did that. Um, now I'm just going to take off this piece of wire here, which was the remains of the old transformer. And I can solder this to here. Like so. Perfectly nice joint, that. And uh, we're kind of in a position now to... Well, no, I don't, think I, I don't think I will start cable tying things together at the moment. Let's just leave that for the moment. At some point we'll tidy all this lot up. I might put another cable tie around here and make it quite nice. But let's not get too too hung up on that. Right, I'm going to take a quick break for the moment and um, I've been summoned into the kitchen to see what I want for supper. It's not my turn to cook tonight so that's good and then when I come back we'll, we'll have a look at this lot here. I mean look at it, there's a load there but don't worry because it's all quite obvious about where everything goes. So I'll be back fairly soon. Okay back again, I've put in the supper order so that should be fairly soon. Right, let's, let's make a start on the secondary and what looks like a bewildering variety of leads here. 
um, but it's not as difficult as it seems. So for example, very quickly, these two yellow ones here are the five volts for the heater of the um, rectifier valve. So they're gonna go here, that's easy. These two green ones are the 6.3 volts for all the other valves, heaters, and they are going to end up over here on the indicator bulb because the indicator bulb is treated pretty much as another filament in, in this circuit. So that got rid of that lot. That quite clearly is ground. And then, then we have the HT leads, that's all we've got left. However, on this transformer, because it's a kind of um, universal transformer, they've given two sets of HT windings. There's a 335 volt winding, and that's on red-orange, so that's that's these two here, red striped orange. I'm just going to tie a knot in those, we don't want those. And this particular one, because it's got 6L6 valves, I want the higher voltage HT. And that's a 365 volt winding. And they are the two reds, which are here, red and red. And they have a center tap. Because it's 365 and, and the centre tap is on this red striped yellow. By the way, I got all this information from the leaflet which came with the transformer, so it's not um, nothing clever I'm doing here. Okay, now HT leads are going to go over to the rectifier valve again. They're going to go here. Um, and our centre tap goes to ground. So it's another wire that's going to go to ground. And that just leaves one wire, which is the, uh, the bias wire which is red stripe blue which is this last one here and this one is going to go over to our little bias circuit under here with a diode and capacitor so that's that's fairly easy really we can connect all that, that lot up can't we let's do our little trick again with our HT leads that we don't need so this is the red and orange ones these are the 335 volt HT leads I'm just going to double check they're red and orange. Yes, they're red and orange. And I'm going to do exactly the same with those as I did with these primary leads here. We're just going to chop them off. We don't want to chop them off too short. Someone may want them. And they can always get them again if I do this. A little bit of heat shrink sleeving over the end of each one. Like that just to make sure they don't, particularly with HT leads, you know, with 335 volts on, we don't want them touching anything. A little bit of peak shrink. That's rendered them nice and safe. And uh, I'm just going to tuck them through here for the moment. This is just going to remind me to tidy them all up. We'll do a little lead tidying exercise at the end, I think, without getting too enthusiastic at this point. Well, what, we, what do we want to do next? Why don't we do the heater, the five volt heater for the rectifier valve? That's going to go on that terminal there and that terminal there where you can see those yellow wires which I chopped off from the, from the earlier um, transformer. So I think I'll just give these a bit of a twist. Well, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll do that later. So get the le length about right, that's about right. We can chop those off now, strip them with our wire strippers, one and two, give them a little twist, next we want to tin them. They're a bit long at the moment, I'll trim them down. There we go, that's nicely tinned. Second one. I'm making this look easier, but you know, it's just years of doing it. I guess the way I'm holding this wire with two fingers and holding the solder with my thumb and finger rather than chasing it around the bench. But uh, anyway little technique I've developed over the years. Be careful when you trim leads like this, you don't be doing it over here, you know, chopping off bits that end up here, so always make sure you do it over the bench, get rid of it over that way, not down here where it can do some damage. There we go, good. 
Right, so I'm now going to, um, one at a time, because I don't want to misremember, I'm going to remove this yellow wire here. Don't want to get it wrong. And then I'm just going to give these a little bit of a twist. Put them under these primary leads. And then I'm going to solder this one down to here. Again, I just might need to get my head in there a little bit to see what I'm doing. Nice, that's on nicely. The second one goes here. I'm just going to take off this old lead. Or that other lead on there is the um, cathode, and that's the HT, would you believe, that goes out, the DC HT that goes out to the smoothing caps, where I'm soldering this lead now. There we go. Nice. Look at that, and that is our 5 volts done. I think since we're over here on the rectifier and I can see these two red leads here which are the HT leads why don't we just put our HT leads in there which is which is our two red ones from here again make doubly sure I've got the right ones because they're not striped anything there's our center tap there's our bias so yep it's these two here and again let's bring these neatly around here we want them about the same length as here to go into here I'll chop those off Rip them with our trusty wire strippers. These are great, these automatic wire strippers. Give them a bit of a twist. Have a bit of a tin. I'm old fashioned enough to be using lead solder here. I can't stand this new modern stuff, this lead free stuff. It just doesn't work as well in my book and uh, if I'm going to die of lead poisoning I probably would have already but it's getting harder to get hold of of course there you go nicely tinned trim them off a little bit trim them away from the chassis yeah like that good now I'm going to take off one at a time these two little red tags here so that I don't forget where the leads go. Here's the first one coming off. May as well twist these as well. And let's put our first one on. There we go. Job done there. Take our second stub off. Always do this, if you chop anything out, leave a little bit of a of a lead as an eye dent so that you can remember where to put the new ones. There we go. Like that, great. So there's our HT. And again, we're all ready to look to get some nice cable ties around here eventually to tidy this lot up, but we won't do that now. Right, the next thing to do, I think, is the... Um, uh, 6.3 volts for the heaters for the rest of the circuit. The heaters on the power valves, the heaters on the preamp valves. On the previous transformer it went to these two greens here, this green here and this green here. Um, let me just zoom in a little bit there. I guess that might help you a little bit there and there. Um, and you, you probably notice these 200 ohm resistors here, which, which did go to ground. So we have 200 ohm resistors to ground. Um, this is a what's called a balancing, a hum balancing circuit for the, for the heaters. So if you don't have a center tap on your heater supply, uh, we do, by the way, green, yellow. Yes, it's this one here. So um, we have 6.3 volts, naught 6.3 volts. Sometimes you just get the two 6.3 volts, 6.3 volts across here. And 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 if you have that, you need to have these 100 ohm resistors to ground to balance to hum balance the circuit. Just gets rid of hum on the heater circuit. But if you've got a center tap like you have here, you don't need these 100 ohm resistors. So what I'm going to do is just remove those. We can then connect in the the heaters uh, without 
without getting involved in this uh, hum balancing circuit here. So I'm just going to see if I can get yeah, that came off fairly easily. How about this one? You're going to oblige. Oblige, so I'll just chop that off ruthlessly. There we go. Um, now I want to keep this ground here because this is the ground for uh, for the negative bias circuit actually. So I'll just chop these off here, and that's got rid of our 200 ohm um, balancing resistors. There, we don't need those. We are now in a position to take our two 6.3 volt windings and connect them in. To here. By the way, here's the two wires going off to the rest of the heater circuits. And don't forget, we'll also be grounding this one to give us our, our hum, hum balance. So let me get these about the right length. Uh, I think, yeah, kind of that will do. Chop them off. them with the old wire strippers. There we go. Give them a bit of a twist. We're getting there really. We're, we're nearly done. Not too far off. We've got the grounds to do and the bias to do. And we're close to being able to turning it on and um, doing a little bit of a test. So let's um, Let's uh, tin these now. There we go, that's one. And the second one. There we go, good. That's excellent. Now I'm probably going to get my head in the way just whilst I do this, so, so do excuse me. There we go, they're both on. And again, we're in good shape here to bring these leads around here and dress them nicely and make it all look pretty. So I'm not going to pick up my ground from, from here by putting this tag on here. In fact, you know what, I don't like doing that anyway particularly. It's not a great way of picking up a ground because these nuts get loose over time, years go by, and, and you lose your ground. And losing um, a ground connection can be quite, um, you know, very serious for an amp. So I'm going to um, take this over here and have a common ground um, here uh, for all these different grounds we've got. Um, right, now, let's have a little think what we're doing. Oh, okay, so the only other, apart from grounds, the only other connection we've got to do is this red striped blue and this is our 60 volt or 50 volt winding tap which goes over to our bias um, circuit here. Underneath here is a diode and a smoothing capacitor which you can just see there and that produces the, the minus 50 volts DC um, for the bias of the power valve. So this needs to go, um, you won't be able to see it and I don't really want to take the camera down off its overhead just to show you but it, there's a little connector connection in there just where my finger is um, which I'm going to connect this to now so let me get the length right on that and uh, about that length yeah again the usual old thing cut it off strip it and uh, where are we where's my solder here we go Solder, or tin I should say. Okay, now I'm just going to stop the camera for a second whilst I do this because all you'll see is my head. And this has been quite a long take anyway, so I'll just stop it now and I'll rejoin you in a sec. Okay, so I've been having a little think here and I realised I've got quite a few grounds here. I've got this one, I've got this one here. We, went, we need to bring this uh, bias uh, ground around here. We've got this center tap for our HT. 
we've got the center tap for our 6.3 volts and we've got the orange which is the screen which wraps around the um, the outside of the transformer so um, you know to solder all these down onto the chassis here would be fairly tricky so what I've done is I've just made up a little bit of tag board here which I'm going to solder down there um, I've joined them all together so the ground comes up to here and these are all joined together with a bit of wire uh, I've tinned the bottom of this ready so all we need to do is to solder that there now I say all this is not an easy job um, in fact it's actually impossible with an ordinary kind of soldering iron so I'm going to show you how I do that and uh, you can see how we managed to solder to the chassis now to solder onto a chassis you don't want this no 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 that won't do anything what you need is this now that's what you call a soldering iron I picked that up um, I think for a couple of pounds in a car boot sale I've got several of several of these great and um, you'll never touch it with an ordinary soldering iron so let's just see how this does on here I might need to show you a little trick uh, to, to to help with this but let's just see how we get on with them just applying some heat directly here takes a little while obviously to heat things up and even this is struggling of course the reason is you've got a massive heat sink here with um, with the chassis, it's just sucking the heat out. Okay, well this is a good time to show you the trick. I'm just going to leave that over here to heat up a little bit more. It's not actually quite fully hot yet. Okay, again, this is something you should you should really own. It's a um, I've got it's a Steinel 1800 watt heat gun, but yeah, there are loads of them around. Um, a paint stripper actually is fairly good, although it's not so controllable as this. This has got various uh, settings on it. So I'm going to put this to about um, three and we're going to heat up the chassis. It'll make a bit of a noise so I won't talk. But I'm going to heat up the chassis around here and get some, dump some heat into the metalwork here so that we have a fighting chance when we put the soldering iron on of... Uh, throws out quite a bit of heat this thing. You wouldn't want to put your hand in front of it. In fact, it could almost melt that solder there. Yeah, that's really dumping some heat into that chassis. Now I'm going to quickly grab my soldering iron and see if having done that, that has made a difference. And look at that, that just comes straight off there. Absolutely perfect. Wonderful. A bit of luck, we can pop this on, on here. Solder that down. Give it a good old tug, make sure it doesn't, you know, just flip off there. Yeah, that's on there really solidly. Good, so we're good to go now to um, get these earth wires now connected onto this tag strip. So let's do that next. Okay, let me show you where I've got to. I've removed that um, bit of tinned copper wire from here and uh, replaced it with the screen wire. We have our other grounds, that's the screen, this is the centre tap for the HT, this is the centre tap for the 6.3 volts. We have this which goes off to the circuit somewhere, and we have the earth coming in from the power cord. So we have all these six, six wires which are all going to join down into our tag strip here. So that's our next task. Um, so what I'm going to do now is to um, trim these to the right length and strip them to get ready to hook them up to this terminal strip. I'm going to trim them a little bit longer 
because I'm going to make a little hook on each one to go through the uh, through the terminal strip and get a slightly better mechanical connection. So we'll just uh, strip all of these quickly. There we go. And uh, give them a little twist. Um, yeah, I'll sort that one out in a minute, and that one's not too bad in itself. Okay, so I'll, t I'll tin these now. This is called Slow TV, where you can get yourself into a mindfulness moment watching me solder leads. I quite like Slow TV. I'm not a great fan of all these half second jump cuts where you can't concentrate for more than a quarter of a second without something happening on the screen. Saw a TV program the other day of someone bringing sheep down from a from a Welsh hill, and it was about half an hour without any co any commentary whatsoever. Just the sound of these sheep bleating and the dog barking and the shepherd calling. It was incredibly restful. Right, done that. Right, with a pair of needle nose pliers, we can just uh, bend these over to form a bit of a hook. Ooh, that's, that one might be a bit too thick. We might have a second thought about that one. There we go. Have a look what we can do here. Right, well this one can bend round. Let's see. This one can bend round the tin copper wire. The idea is to just get all these mechanically um, sorted out first and then we'll just go along and solder. <coughs> okay, this one can go through that terminal, that works quite nicely there. What else have we got? This uh, green one's quite thin, so that can might, might go through that terminal too. We're lucky. Yep, that goes through that one as well, good. That saves us a terminal. What else have we got? Um, this is quite a thick one, this. Um, okay, will that go through there? It's quite thick, this one. Yep, that, that will go through there, that's good. Quite awkward to get in there. That one's off. The orange. Will that one go through there? Yeah, that'll go through there. Good. And that will just leave the this earth one here, which I think I'll solder on at the last moment. So have we got them all? We've got one, two, three, four, five, and the sixth one. Yeah, so I'm going to go along and solder those, and I'll pop this one on last. One. Mustn't forget this one's hooked around here. That's it, good. So that's those three done. We'll now do this big one here. Okay, good. And then this one here. There we go. That's all of those done. And now I think... Right, let's trim that up a bit. I'll just tin it again.
There we go. And then we can pop it on anywhere here, really, but I think... Why don't we pop it on here? There we go. So I make that job done in terms of all the connections. What we'll do now, I think, is to uh, tidy up a few of these with some cable ties, and then we're ready to do some testing. I suppose really I should do the testing before I do the cable tying, but I'm reasonably confident we don't have to worry too much. So it's just really a matter of um, making this look as nice as you can with a few ties. There's no real rhyme or reason to this, it's just a neatening procedure. You don't have to keep any particular cables with it, with other cables or anything like that. And what can we do with these? I think these can go down, I think we'll just pop a... These do actually belong with these green ones here, so we may as well put those together. And what have we got here? Are these these old HT leads we don't need? Those need to go down there. It's okay. Well why don't we why don't we put these all these leads that we don't need? Why don't we put all those together? And I think I'll just put a clip round here as well, that'll just hold them all. It's just a question of making it tidy really. doesn't improve anything doing this, just uh, makes it look neat. Right, now we'll just clip off the excess of the cable ties. There we go, and there was another one somewhere I think. Oh, there we go, that orange one. That's good, yep, so that is really job done. And um, the next thing that we will do now is to power it up. Now of course we're not going to do that just by plugging it in, that would be completely foolish. I'm going to put it onto the Variac and gradually increase the power whilst constantly checking with my meter that the voltages are doing sort of what they're supposed to do. So that's the next thing we'll do. I'll see you when we do that. Right, we're going to now try and um, put some power onto this uh, transformer and we're going to do that very gradually. I've got it plugged into a Variac over there. I'll, I'll show you that later on but it's just a, you've seen it before, it's just a dial which allows you to wind up and down the AC. At the moment it's at zero. So we obviously don't want to just apply full power to this in case we've got something wrong um, with the winding connections and it would be disastrous. So I'm just going to turn it up a little bit to about, I don't know, about 30 or 40 volts on the AC input. I'm going to select my meter to AC and I just want to check around a bit to make sure we've got the kind of AC voltages which I would expect. And we can't do too much damage at 30 volts coming in as opposed to 230. So on the 5 volt heater winding for the um, rectifier valve I'd expect to see, I'm not really sure, half a volt or something, I'm not quite sure what have we got here. Let's put this down onto 20 volts. Well, we've got 0.6 of a volt, so that's fine. Don't forget we're expecting 5 volts, but we've only got about 30 volts going in. On the um, other heaters, the 6.3 volts, I'd expect to see maybe a little bit more than 5 than, than we had there. And we have indeed got 0.78 volts, so that's good, AC. On the HT, I'd expect to see a lot more. I'm not quite sure what, maybe 50 volts? No idea, really. Let's have a look see what we've got here. That's gone into overload, more than 20. It's quite high actually. So we've got nearly 100 volts already on the HT at um, just 30 or 40 volts in. And um, on our bias winding, again I'd expect to see a volt or two, not really quite sure. So we'll look, it's down here. Um, oh, we've got a bit more than that, 5 volts or so. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to, just now going to wind it up a little bit more. 
maybe that was on 50 there I'm now going to put up to let's put it up to 100 so with 100 volts in again we'd expect to see I don't know what two or three volts on the on the 5 volt winding let's have a look see what we've got 1.78 that's fine I'd expect that I'd expect a bit more than that on the 6.3 volt winding so maybe two volts what have we got two 2.1 two point two that's looking good and then on our HT again we're going to be up quite high so let's just check that AC remember we're on yeah, that's more than 200 volts it's amazing how quickly this goes up there we go, 250 volts already, amazing. So it's all looking quite promising. Um, and then bias winding, again, that will be going up now to about 10 volts or so. That's 13, 14 volts there, all looking good. One on the chassis and one on the cathode of the um, rectify valve. See if we've got any DC. Oh, yes, we have. Look, it is gradually starting to give us some DC. Don't forget it's got a very feeble heater voltage on the rectifier diode at the moment but this is all looking very promising. Our DC is coming up as well. So I think now I'm going to turn the um, Variac up a bit more. We're now on 150 volts roughly coming in and uh, so let's see how our DC is doing again since we're still on the DC scale and look that's up to 260 volts DC so this is all looking quite promising. I'm going to check now if I've got any negative DC bias voltage here. And I have, look, I've got minus 31 volts on the DC bias, which is great. That means our output tubes aren't going to cook. We're pretty much full there on the Variac. So let's see how our DC is doing. 430 volts DC, lovely. I'm liking that. Our bias voltage is um, minus 49. Don't forget this is the, the the raw bias voltage. This will be potted down to give us the bias voltage which drives the actual um, grids of the output tubes. That's all looking good. What else do I want? I don't think I want anything else. Pilot lights on, you can see that glowing. That's How amazing. Isn't that fantastic? And um, everything's working fine. The next thing would be for me to bias the output tube just to make sure they are correct. But um, that's job done. We have installed a new mains transformer, wired it all up, tidied up the wiring, and I think you can see now that it wasn't too difficult. You can see where all those wires go now. 5 volts for the heaters, 6.3 volts for the other heaters, HT with a centre tap, and, um, and the bias winding to give us our negative bias. There you go. So I'm going to call that a wrap because it's getting late and it's time for my bed. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. I quite enjoyed the slower pace of that and getting that transformer in, going through the connections with you one at a time and actually soldering them in as you watched. I hope you didn't find it too tedious and um, it's nice when it goes so straightforward and works when you power it all up. That's always a bonus. Well thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.